Hi hi. This is a Korean epic story, the story of the boxed up governor. Korean folk tales are known for their sense of mystery and Asian soul. Im Bang, who was born in 1640, became the governor of Seoul in 1719 when he was 80 years old. And this folk story was written by him together with Yi Ryuk, a famous Korean writer. And here is the fable. The mayor of Gyeongju was often visited by the governor of the city. The mayor never liked the governor because he always made sneering remarks whenever he visited the mayor's place. His unruly behavior was the talk of the town. Looking at the dancing girls at mayor's place, the governor would occasionally tap on their head with his wooden pipe and vehemently say, "How do you all tolerate these girls dancing all around? They may look pretty and innocent, but they are devils and gremlins beneath. Stay away from them." The mayor didn't appreciate the governor's attitude. and in an effort to garner evidence against the governor the mayor sent messages to the dancing girls and lured them by saying i will give you a hefty reward to someone who can by any means can deceive this governor and put him to shame i want people of kyongju to know about this crafty man And to this deal there was a young dancer who agreed to come forward. The governor resided in the quarters of the city where the Confucian temple was. And he had only one servant with him, a young lad. The dancing girl who promised to help the mayor started visiting the temple often. Standing near the temple and dressed like a common woman She called the governor's servant boy frequently. The boy would also go out and meet her and then she would just speak to him for a moment or two and then leave. She would come sometimes once a day or twice a day and this she kept up for a long time. The governor at last one day he inquired the boy as to who this woman was and that she came so frequently and called him. She's my sister, the boy informed. She's all alone. Her husband hasn't returned from peddling, so she's helpless and I'm trying to help her. Listening to this, the governor ignored the matter and went back to his room to continue his work. One evening, when the boy had gone out and the governor was alone, the woman came to the main gateway and called the boy. Seeing her inquiring about the boy, the governor invited her inside his place. She blushed and looked modest. The governor said, "My boy just went out, and I want to smoke now. Go and get a light for my pipe, please." He said. She brought the light and then he said, "Sit down and smoke a little, won't you?" She was shocked. On hearing this, she said, How could I dare to do such thing? He sheepishly said, "Never mind, there is no one else here now. But if you don't wish, it's fine, no hassle." Left with hardly any choice, she obeyed her new master and smoked a puff or two. The governor could feel his heart pumping faster and he was drawn to her. In my life I have seen many beautiful women but none like you. Can't you live here with me? I'm quite alone and no one will know, he said. She pretended to be greatly scandalized. I'm a low class woman and you are the governor. How can you think of such a thing? I guess you are joking, she said. No, my dear. I mean every word. I am serious about what I said. I am a lonely man and I need your company, he asserted. She agreed. I'm grateful to you for your kindness. I can come, but there is one concern, she said. What concern is it? the governor asked her. 
You stay in a sacred place and the ancient law prohibits women from staying here, is that right? She inquired. The governor was surprised to see the girl's knowledge and asked, You are correct, but how do we meet then? She offered a plan. My home is just nearby and I am also alone. So if you quietly can come to my place at nights, we can meet and no one will know. And I shall send a hat through the boy and you can wear that for disguise. With the commoner's hat, no one will recognize you and it will not break any law also. The governor agreed to her plan. And the next evening, the woman sent a hat through the boy as planned. The twilight struck and the governor entered her hut. She offered him fruits and milk and they chatted in the dim light of the lamp. Suddenly, the evening was disrupted as she leaned on to hear the loud noise approaching towards her place. She screamed, saying, Oh my lord, that's my husband's voice. He is a loathsome man and we parted our ways three years ago. He looks drunk and agitated. Why is he back? I have put you in a terrible situation, governor. What shall I do? She said. And as she continued, her husband knocked at the door and said, Open the door, lady. Don't you recognize my voice? She reluctantly opened the door half and answered, Are you Cholo and have we not separated for good years ago? What brings you here now? He answered back, I have something special to tell you. And he pounded the door open and he came thundering in. She rushed back inside the room and told the governor, I apologize, but my drunk husband is making the disturbance. You have to somehow escape now. She requested, please hide inside the empty wooden rice box. She said as she lifted the dusty lid. With no other escape route, the governor dumped himself in inside the box hastily. The husband said, I have come to take my clothes that I left and also the other things that belong to me. Then she threw out his belongings to him, but the husband had his eyes set on the wooden box. He said, pointing at the wooden box, That's mine. She replied, No, that's not yours. I bought that myself with two rolls of raw silk. You can't take it. The ex-husband said, but I gave you one of those rolls, hence the box is mine as well. No one agreed to leave the box and they quarreled the whole night. Finally, the matter was brought to the mayor's court to decide who is the rightful owner of the box. The mayor ordered to cut the box into two parts and each can take one. As the saw started to pierce, a voice came from the box. Oh no, please stop it, don't cut me. Pretending to be surprised, the mayor asked, who is inside? The servants managed to unlock the box and the hall broke into rows of laughter seeing the half-dressed governor. His Excellency, why are you inside the box? The mayor could hardly hide his victory and ask the governor. The shameful governor had no courage to face the court and he quickly covered himself with a woman's green dress which was available there. He galloped away to his quarters which was in the temple, never to return. And to this date, the people of Gyeongju narrate the story of the boxed-up governor with a hearty laugh. So that's the end of the Korean fable, the story of the boxed-up governor. Do share your thoughts in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Bye-bye.